So, you know, it's an XY table. If you plug in zero for X, mm -hmm. I get zero. Plug yeah. in one for X, I get three. Mm -hmm. Like a negative one for X, I also get three. Yeah. And you just plot the points and you're good. Uh-huh. Um... Plug in zero, you get zero. Mm -hmm. Plug in two, you get negative two. Negative two, you still get negative two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here you go. So that's what you're doing for T tables. You're just you're plugging in points and working on it. Now the T table is gonna be a little tougher for number three. Because you're not really sure where to start. <clears throat> I mean, you could plug in zero, <clears throat> for example, get one. Plug in one, I think you get two. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could plug in negative one, not sure what we'll get. Um, zero. It's kind of hard to tell uh, what to. Because you kind of get something like this, you're not sure what to really make of that. So, what you really want to do for these problems. Is use the form of negative b over two a to find the x core in the vertex. Mm -hmm. And of course, when I plug one, I got two, right? So, mm -hmm. um, but actually, so that's my vertex. So, so now what I kind of realize is that okay. Um, <clears throat> hold on, if I plug in negative one. Most well, negative two, yikes. Mess one up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you get that. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, we talked about that already. And then if you have vertex form, I think it's even easier to know where to start. You start the vertex, mm -hmm. you make a T table, three and one, and then you you know could bump up X or lower X. Yeah. So, so now what if I have um, a linear function? What? A linear function like this, y equals 2x plus 1. Well, that because you could do, just to choose any points you want. Well, can I do 4 and 2? Why 4 and 2? Just, uh, I just feel like 4 and 2 would be a, a good answer, you know? No, no. What, no, what do you want to plug in for x? For X, you plug in zero, one, negative. Yeah, those one. are three really, really, really good points to do. Mm -hmm. And so be zero. <laughs> Thank you, good boy. Yeah. <sighs> to get that. <clears throat> Then what? We need five points, so I need to get two other points. Well, then like plug in two and negative two. And then you need the mirror. You need a mirror something. You need a mirror the y. That you would do for um, parabolas. Yeah, that's so, what I also do. I think because he like doxed me on my last test because I only put three uh, three points. So I would do zero, one, negative one, two, and negative two. Okay. Okay. 
Um, well, try this one. Okay, so for um, um so for zero. Wait, so I got a question though. Yes, yeah, so what's your question? So they do, as long as the points work, it does not matter the number. Right, exactly. It okay. does not matter at all. So I'm assuming when my teacher is looking for my answers and there are multiple solutions technically. Or... Correct, right. <clears throat> all right. So for zero, negative, uh, no, it's not going to be a negative one. Um, okay. Ooh. Would it be negative three for two? Or no. So you plug in zero, you get two, right? Yeah. Why well, why don't you plug in one? <clears throat> you get one, you get one oh three. Um when you plug in one, what do you get? Three. Negative one. Negative one. Oh, negative one, then negative one's positive one. Okay, then plug negative one into this function. So y uh, three times one is plus three five. Good. Oh, that is super easy. Oh, that makes a lot of sense now. Plug in two. <clears throat> a two would be negative three. Uh, negative six plus two would be negative four. And then four. negative two. And eight. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so easy. Yeah. There you go. It's basically like long story short. I didn't know that exactly on the test. That was like the one thing that I did not know how to do, but now now it's easy. So let's try try, try a couple more. All right. Hold on, let's do this here. Yes, um, As to uh, 
Okay, so we'll do zero. How about it? Hmm. How do I? I guess this will be a little harder. Um, zero, zero. That would be. What would zero times that? It would be zero. Um, no, plug zero in for x. What do you got? Um, we'll put zero to x. It'll be seven, seven halves. Oh, seven halves times zero, which is seven halves minus two, which is negative two. Negative two. Okay. Um, for one, that'd be seven hours. I mean, so for one, one will just be seven halves minus two, so five, five, five halves. Five halves. Yeah, so five halves. seven halves minus two, which is um five halves. Three halves actually. Three halves. Oh no. One point five. Yeah. And then we put negative one, so it's negative three halves. I think. I I just I, I can we try can we try number two after this one? That that'd be negative eleven halves. Yeah, negative eleven halves, and then two uh fourteen two. halves. Oh, 12 halves. Yeah, putting in two, you should get a five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should get five, and the negative two is negative um, 10. Uh, negative nine. Negative nine, all right. Then you have points, it should be a line. Uh -huh. Okay. You're going to try two now on your own. Okay, so here, can you, can you set up the T table up? Or sure. Mm -hmm. Just do, just put the numbers out and I'll do it. <sighs> Shouldn't get hard. Okay, so for zero, it'd be three. Zero is three. Three zero. Zero is three. Zero three. Zero three. Zero is three. Uh, three. Okay, keep going. And then one is negative six times one is negative six plus three is negative three. And then one is positive six, nine. Nine and then two negative six times two is negative twelve plus three is negative nine. Two is negative nine. Two is negative nine. Two is negative nine. Two is two is negative negative nine. 
Two is negative nine. Mm -hmm. Negative nine. The negative two is 12, 15. Thanks, points you're good. Okay, so you, you get you know what to do. Yep. No and I I that. I'm not doing it. I just learned today, so well, that's good. That's good. That's good. Um. I think you've been doing stuff like this. Um, hold on. I want to see where your uh, practice test was. I'm getting pretty good at factoring too. I would say. No, no. I just want to see what kind of the concepts. Here we go. Um, do you want me to do a couple of these? Yeah, yeah let's, let's do foiling. Okay, here we go. Right, so with problem. So 3n times n, that'll be, that'll be 3n squared. And 3n times 3 is 9n. And then 2n, that'll be 2n. And then 6. So it would be... Um, not I'm happy. Three n squared plus plus um plus eleven n plus two n. I don't know if that's correct because I just did that off the top of my head, but yeah. So you so so you can get three n squared. Yep. Plus plus eleven n plus six. Okay, try two. Um, and it's three n squared plus negative two n plus negative two n plus plus positive two. I don't know. Wait, I need to simplify that. So be zero. So it would be zero. <sighs> and let's do three now. Um, it'll be four x squared plus negative six x plus six x plus negative nine so that would be um like something something yeah that's pretty easy okay i think you're good there and then let's move on keep back in mm-hmm Factoring, so you just plus like terms. So, how would I factor each completely? Well, if number one's ready in like the only form it can be factored in, right? Yeah, so how would you do one? Well, I think that's ready in like the factor form. 
اه من الطميه B plus seven B plus one. They don't exactly know how to like factor like this. I know to do the other stuff, but I don't know when it's like a problem like this kind of like gets tricky. Okay, number one. Uh, B plus seven B plus one. Yeah, B plus one B plus seven. You got. It. Yeah. Okay, what about two? Mm. Uh, I am um, um, uh, let me write something down kind of what would it be it would be n my n plus one n minus ten n minus one n minus ten oh all right, all right, all right. wait how did I get that one wrong like how did I get I don't know I was in, how did I get in positive? Right. It has to multiply 10 out to negative 11. So you have to have two negatives. Okay. Um, Let's move on to three now. Um, three will three be. Um, three, you're on. On three ten plus and uh, m plus ten m plus nine or m minus nine. Boom. Um, uh, I, I got, I got, yeah, okay. and then, and then uh, we get for, oh, hold on, that's a repeat, I think. No, yeah, no, so yeah, let's do, um, let's do four, five, four, five, six, I'll try something harder. Okay, um, 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 um. The dog eating what the f mom the dog's eating something. Uh n wait. N plus and minus six. Hold on, my dog's eating something. N plus and minus six. Hold on. Put up. Yeah, n plus six and minus two. Okay. Okay, you get the idea. Let's just move on to something more challenging. Uh Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Um, wait, so you want to add up to 15? But wait. Yeah, so what you're doing is this. AX squared plus BX plus C. Mm-hmm. Where a is three, and c is negative five. So you have negative uh -huh. two, top negative two, down below. So it's negative five and three. Uh -huh. So then you put three p squared here uh -huh. and negative five here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, along each row in each column. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this stuff's kind of like tough. So let's try another one.
So be like, be, how late can you stay on for? Um, I'll, I'll stay on for another uh, 10 more minutes. So we'll do a 40 minute call. And then I'll, I'll, I'll tack on the extra 20 minutes for our next meeting, which is right for your final. Um, sure. Yeah, hold on a sec. Let me just make sure. I mean, we so like there. actually like 30 minutes for my final that could also work anything works for me honestly that's all good um yeah because i see you at five on wednesday but let's let's meet a little earlier like maybe at 4 40. all right just so we make up the extra 20 minutes um okay anyway um well um actually let me do that now so i forget One sec. Cool. Um, so yeah. Um, so you did you do eight times two to negative eighteen, mm -hmm. and three here. So what two numbers multiply negative eighteen add to three? Oh, um, six and negative six and three. Good. Well, six and negative three, and then you do a block like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And you put the first term here, the last term here, and then see three n, three n becomes this. Yeah. Six n minus three n. That's why you do that. Yeah. You split the middle term. Uh huh. So what can you factor along each row? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so mm, yeah, and then for number three, well, no, no, we can we can factor on the first row. Oh, uh, and how the second row? Uh, the one, three. Three. Oh, three. Oh, that's nine. I thought that was. Yeah, with the first column. And that's two n. And the last column. Three. Negative three. Good. And that's how you do it. All right. Yep. Okay, so you want to find two numbers that multiply to 12 uh -huh. and add to negative eight. Uh, six, no, negative six, negative six and two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can do it like that. Uh, if you want, that's another technique, but we'll go back to the box again. Yeah. So we can factor along each row. Uh, you could have uh, the first row. And, and second row. Two. Yeah, we'll make it negative two because 
Then that'll be three. Yeah, and, and then three, and then so we'll plug negative six in, and then this will be um negative two. Negative two, exactly right. And if you foil it, it makes sense. Yeah. So cool. Okay. Well, go try four on your own. Okay. Uh, so you need um here, can you just like format it for me, you know what I'm saying? Like just put like the little uh yeah. Diamond. 16, 19. Uh it's just be twelve and five. Or twelve and seven. Twelve and five. No, it's not right. No, that's not right. Actually, shoot, no, uh wait. Does something work here? No, it's on Oh, nothing works here actually. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. No, 60, 15 and 4, 15. 4, 4 and 15. 15 4. Yeah, 60 has, has all, so many factors. Um, Can we, we can pull out the first row. Oh, uh, the first row. Um, you can get out five in. In the second row. In the second row. Uh, four. First column. First column. Five. Five. five what? What? N. Last and column. Three, uh, three. Yeah, three. Mm -hmm. Yep, there you go. So you can do it now. Yep. You got it. All right, that's another skill. Actually, there might be some more advanced. You look at number two. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the same thing. Uh -huh. Negative five and three. And that's it. You're done. All right. Sounds good. So you can do kind of something similar here. Mm -hmm. What two numbers multiply negative 27 after negative 26? Uh, oh, negative 27 and one. Right. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, wait, I lost track. Um, I'll be X, you could take out X from first row, X from that row, X3, actually. Then you could take out 27, negative 22. Or right. Now, you could practice further, but I don't think you guys have done that kind, so. Yeah, we haven't. Uh, yeah, so it's not worried about But I just want to make sure, you know, you don't yeah. get thrown off when you see something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, we covered a wide array. We haven't, we should come back and revisit these kind of distributed property oh, ones. Yeah. Um, radicals, uh -huh. exponents. So uh, these are things we could explore later. Uh,
Okay, cool. Um, well, I think we're all set then. All right. Um, for I'll see you on Wednesday at four forty p.m. Then. All right. Sounds good. I'll Have see a good night. Yeah. Bye. Goodbye. Hello. How you doing, y'all? I'm good. All right, so one one final push until tomorrow. Yeah. Now, what's your summer like? What are you guys doing this summer? Um, I'm mostly um going to like tennis camps. Okay. Over the yeah. Excellent. And what math class are you taking next year? Um, algebra two, trig honors. Good. Excellent. Good. Yeah. All right. I think you'll like that class better. Um. I mean, it's hard. Don't, I taught algebra two trigonometry a long, long time, and uh, it's definitely a hard class. But um, yeah, I, I think you might like that class better. Uh, just uh, I, I think Ms. York has made this class pretty abstract. I mean, it's good. She's definitely got you ready for the next yeah. level. So, 
Um, okay, so your mom sent stuff, or do you want to do this? Because I think we went through everything uh, yesterday, but we can... Um, My mom sent some stuff because I did the chapter two extension handout. Oh, uh, yes. This, yeah, and yeah. also working on the unit circle handout, unit circle, because I haven't studied that yet. Okay. I'll give a sec. Uh, hold on a sec here. Okay, just pull that. Okay. I uh, really appreciate your mom does all these scans for me or for us. So um I actually out the ones that are wrong. Yeah, so this one here. And did she, is is the answer key attached? I'm not sure if it is. I think so. Um, it's just Miss yeah. York's way of doing this is like really, really confusing me. Okay. So here, here's what, what you want to do first. Think about the surface area. I'm sorry, volume of a uh, hemisphere, which is this, right? Because the sphere is four thirds power cube. This is half of it, right? And your race is 18, so it's easy, right? Yeah. We're going to get an answer, right? But then you have to take away this portion, which is one ninth of it. So really, we should multiply this by eight ninths. But after. Or before, it's up to you. Because you know eight ninths remains. One ninth is gone. So it looks like you were on track to doing that, but you, this should be cubed. And of course, you didn't do the surface area. Now, the surface area is four pi r squared, but the thing is that you have half of the lateral area exposed. You have a bottom part as well, which is pi r squared. Yeah. So it's actually three pi r squared. But. Three? Why is it three? Because the bottom. Circular bottom. When would it be two pi r? Because what's exposed? The dome part and the bottom part. The bottom part's a circle. So it would be three pi r squared. Right. So nine hundred seventy-two, but there's there's this like part that's cut out in the circle. Yes, yeah, so I know. So now let's back up a little bit here. That's what makes the surface area more, a little more tricky, right? So this pi r square part, that's going to be eight ninths times it, because eight ninths remains. Likewise with this one also. But then there's this part that's exposed. What what is that adduct? Yeah, let's figure it out. Oh, this it's a it's a um it's a quarter circle, actually, because it's a right angle. How do we know that that's like a right angle? Well, ask me, how else would it be? It's the altitude, right? Oh, yeah. It's 
perpendicular, of course, it has to be. So you're going to have pi, so a one fourth pi 18 squared, but then times two. And then you work that out. <clears throat> And then plus um so I got one hundred sixty two pi. Um, yeah, and then you should be fine after that. So and if we look at our answer key, so hopefully that makes sense, like just being methodical and kind of breaking it down as best we can. So her answer key, I think makes sense. I mean, pi, you know, she did volume of the cube, half of it, and then eight ninths. And then she did the same thing here. Eight ninths times the, the bottom part. Eight nine times the lateral area, and then the two quarter circles. I don't, I don't think you realize it's a quarter circle. That's probably why you're, you're confused. Yeah, she, I she, 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 she didn't annotate this, you know. So that, that's why you're confused. But it, it makes sense. I I would done exactly the way she did it. But you need this is why you have someone like me to help you <laughs> under make sense of the solutions, right? Yeah. So it's all good. And then, so I got basically like the one. Okay. Yeah, so here, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of like a bowl shape. It's like carved out. So oh, yeah, I was, I was confused because it wasn't like a full line, so I didn't really know if that meant it was cut out. Well, here's the deal. I'll give you a sec here. Um, So 144 pi. But then subtract the uh, hemisphere, which you did. Yeah, so you got it. You're good there. The surface area is where you're going to challenge, right? So you have a circular bottom, right? So you should have pi r squared, which you do. You have a ladder of two pi r h, which you do. Then you have the hemisphere that's exposed. And if you got to do, oh no, you did two pi r squared. Hmm. Wait one sec. Yeah, the heck. You know, I'll add all together, 36, 32. 68. Oh, you did something weird. Okay, I don't know what the heck you're doing here. That that, that seems really weird to me. I, that I don't get. Uh -huh. Um. Yeah, so what's happening, okay. Yes, yeah, so you're much sort of a solid. Got it, got it, got it, okay. Yeah, the, 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 there's no circular top, but it's like you carved. Uh, it's kind of, kind, of, kind of thing of like, maybe like, um, you're trying to put a scoop of ice cream in there or something, if that makes sense. Or you took a scoop of ice cream out, if that makes sense. Oh, so um, there's no circle on the top? No, of course not, right. But 
but you're adding all these together, which is what you didn't do. So you, you just kind of, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. So, okay. You totally could have had it. Okay. Um, and then four, I also got wrong. So. Okay. So for four, find the volume of the box and subtract the, uh, the volume of the cylinder. Again, I was like a little bit confused of the way that like this your was. Um, well, the volume part, you just take the air of the box. That's easy. 36 times 8, or 48 times 6. And the volume of the cylinder is pi squared h. Yeah. Oh, wait one sec. There's no pi here. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not 288 pi. It's, just, it's 288 minus 32 pi. That was a mistake you made. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, you're, you're just, the carelessness is killing you. That's really what's happening. No, it makes sense. Her, her solutions totally make sense. Volume, prison, volume, cylinder. Oh, yeah. The volume, I, I understand the volume. Oh, okay. So it's a surface area. Okay, got it. <clears throat> okay. The... Um, okay, let's back up then. Um, <clears throat> okay, so how many faces are exposed? on the um box six right but two of them have car have um, holes cut through right do they want but, us to find the area inside and out of course it's exposed okay think of surface area like this if you took the object and dipped it in a bucket of paint what would have paint on it if that enterprise paint on it that's surface area because on the surface Right, just think if you visualize that, you'll never miss these. Maybe that might help you. Maybe that that's the um the missing link. Like I'm not sure. I mean, I might have little kids, right? But um, you know, they have all these like blocks and stuff that have like weird shapes and whatnot. And you know, if I dipped in a bucket of paint, yeah, anything that's exposed is gonna paint on it. Um so anyway, you know, four. Rectangle is not cut out, which is 8 times 6 or 48 times 4, which you need to do. You didn't do that, actually. I don't think you did. Hard to tell what you did. And then you have two that are 6 by 6. But then you have to um, subtract the circle, raise it to 2, so it's a... Two times four pi. And then the inner part, which is um, two pi or h. So 32 pi.
Okay. So yeah, just combine it all. Um, and I'm, I'm sure she did the same exact thing. Um, yeah, she's doing the same exact thing. Yep. Yeah. No different. Uh, oh, sorry, I looked at the wrong one. Um, yep. <clears throat> um, 72, 192, negative 8 pi, 32 pi. I mean, she's not labeling, I suppose. Um, well, she kind of did. You have one, two, you have four of those, you have three of those. Yeah, her, her social keys are, are pretty rock solid. Um, I got five. six, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, one should be easy because you have um twenty seven for the cube, and then you have the race is one point five. But how did you miss that? Because you did, you did everything you're supposed to do. I think what I did was um I didn't um. Huh. At first, I don't think I added pi, and also um I didn't like I did the two pi r, but I didn't do the. circle on the base hold on, hold on let's look top of the volume first so two-thirds times pi times 1.5 cube yeah plus 27 okay i'm not sure what happened to your calculation but hold on i've got to turn this so it should be 34.07 Um, give me a sec here. Okay, the patrol area. Um, how many faces are exposed in the cube? Six. But five fully. So it's 45. Plus, then you have the top, which is nine. Minus um, this area of the circle, which is pi 1.5 squared. So yeah, and then you just calculate it, that's all. Oh, then you have the top, sorry, the dome as well, plus um, two pi r squared. Yeah, the same exact thing. Yep, same thing. Okay, so...
I want you to try and make sense for solutions now because I want to kind of empower you to do that. Okay, see if you can make sense of it. Mm -hmm. Rotol area. You have the dimensions, right? Mm -hmm. Um, like the height and the um. Radius are the same, and the slant height for the cone is six root two. Yeah, correct. Good, good. Yes, now see what you did wrong. Oh, okay. This is not exposed though. That's right here. That's not exposed. You can't do that. What you're doing is you're taking the formulas for cones or cylinders or spheres or whatever, and you're just using that formula haphazardly. You're not asking yourself, wait, what is actually exposed? I would say don't even look, use those formulas. I mean, yes, use them, but don't. <laughs> that makes sense. Find what you actually need. Okay. You don't need, because it's not exposed, the circle, right? You don't want to do that. Yeah, you shoot yourself in the foot many times. Um, this is a parallelogram base, right? So volume should be easy. Yeah, then you have to use a um, trig, I think. No, you don't need to use trig because you know the base is going to be um, 25 times 25. It's a parallelogram. Oh, yeah. How do I know that the base is? The base is any side you want. But, but, the, but I thought that, 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 I thought that was the height. No, no, it's both. It's the base and the height. It's both. Oh. And then times 30. Uh, yeah, that's pretty easy, right? Um, oh, but then he has to subtract. Sorry, my bad. The cylinder part, which is eight. So, um, just that there. So, wouldn't it 
Yes. Right. So. Wouldn't it be um eighteen seven five zero minus the volume of the cylinder? Right. Exactly. Right. Right. Minus um. And then um. Yeah, then um, the surface area, you have 30 times 25, four times, right? Yeah. Plus the surface area of the cylinder, or the lateral area of the cylinder, 2 pi r h. So there you go. Miss York has it as 4,999.718. Oh, 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 I forgot to also do this. My bad. You have 25 times 25 times 2 minus the area of the circles, which is um, two of those uh, pi r squared. There you go. No, oh, four. Yikes. So this is a different hand. In Miss York's answer key, um, let me take a look at the line. She says we have to do uh, Sokitoa. Why though? Because I thought the height was twenty five. Unless um, she, unless she meant that for this to be twenty five, no. She said. Uh wait, wait no hold on. Now I'm confused. Oh, crap. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Shoot. No, you're right. Okay. Yes. The altitude is still 25. So, that, so that we, we're right about um, the volume. Um, 25. Times 25. Minus pi four squared times thirty. But then the total area. Okay, so we do have two times twenty five. Oh, sorry, twenty five times twenty five times thirty. My bad. 
but we have this right here. Uh, minus plus the lateral area, which is two pi. Come on, man. Come on. Four times thirty. Uh, because that's in inner part. Okay, then you have these two here, which are twenty five times thirty. So two times twenty five times thirty. Where I messed up. Now I'm realizing it. Is that's not twenty five. Yeah. So you. So, yeah. But then, how am I supposed to find? Well, you know this is 25 because that's the altitude. So you just do trig. I'll call this like X. Mm -hmm. Equals 25 over X. And you solve for X. And then when you do that, you got two of them. Two times X times... um. Uh, 30. Because X will be 25 over sine 70. So there you go. Cool. All right. So now we could do um here. Um, give me one sec. Come on. Okay. It's located. Okay, let's see here. One more thing I have to do. Let me pull up here. Uh, 
Um, I was wondering if we could practice drawing, drawing like coterminal, negative coterminal angle. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, give me a sec. Um, but I want to do some more solid geometry stuff too. Hold on. I just got to delete this. And here. I get my calculators for the whole um, test, which is nice. Well, good. Good. Perfect. All right. Let's close this down. Geometry. I have spring fine. Oh, here we go. We may have done this one already, but maybe we'll do it again. All right, here we go. Got it now. Okay, so we think about this one. Maybe we're working through it. Um,
How's it going? I'm just finding the um length right now with okay. the so good. To you're doing you're doing some trig, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I got um ninety-eight point yep. oh six eight. You got it. have you done this one yet? Um like coordinate geometry. Yeah, have you have you done this problem yet? Um I don't like something similar, but like I don't like Yeah, because cause that's something we worked on a while ago, so I think we should try this again. Okay. So you have this, obviously.
So can you imagine what, what's being rotated? Um, it would make like a cylinder. Oh, cone. It's good. Yeah, it's not quite a cone. Um, well, I suppose you can make it like a cone. Yeah, you can. Yeah, because you have a cone, a big cone, but then you take away the little cone up top and the cylinder down below. And what's left over is what is your solid. So, yeah. Is it gonna make like a fruit stand or oh a fruit? Oh what's our? Like a is it is it a cone or like a fruit? It's not quite a cone, it's just what's left over. Okay. So you, you have your big cone, right? Find the volume of the big cone first. Okay. Then find the volume of the small cone. If I'm buying the cylinder. So let's find the big cone. Um, I'm doing that. Where are you getting 12 from in the big cone? That's the radius. Oh, the radius yeah. is...
Um, so I found the volume. Do I subtract the volume? Yeah, just, you're done. You, you just, just to work that out. That's it. That's the answer. 432 pi minus 108 minus 36, right. So it'll be 288 pi. Uh, it's kind of hard to do that without a picture and it's extra credit. So let's start with the coterminals annual stuff. So do you know how to draw angles in standard position? I think so, I can. Like seven degrees is like this, right? So then you go backwards. That'd be 290 degrees. Is that the negative coterminal angle? Oh, sorry, negative 290, my bad, yes. Mm -hmm. Or you go like this, which is 430 degrees. What's that? You go around once, that's a positive coterminal angle. You go around once, and then you go, a little bit more to get to the same place. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, a negative coterminal angle is is what's the reference angle? Seventy. Like for for example, if the um. If the angle is not in the first quadrant, then what would the reference angle be? It's always an acute angle that with the x-axis, always. That's the reference angle? 100% correct, always. Okay. So like negative 125, what's that reference angle? Um. Forty-five. Nope. 55. And then the positive coterminal angle is um two thirty five. Yeah. And it's already a negative coterminal angle. Well no no no. no. You got now. You got to find. There's infinite coterminal angles, by the way. You can go around many times. Then We're what would be one the, of them? Then what would be the negative coterminal angle? Subtract three hundred and sixty. It'll be negative four hundred and eighty-five. Oh, And positive coterminal, you add 
you at 360? Of course, right. Correct. Yes, that's all you do. Actually, that's the easiest way to do it. So like you add two pi or subtract two pi if it's in radians. Okay. Or you can have four pi or six pi or eight pi. You can do it multiple, there's infinite possibilities. That's all you do. It's pretty easy. What do you need to subtract to get the reference angle? 360. Because you're doing one revolution. But I thought that's how you get the negative coterm. Exactly. That's what you just asked, right? How to get the negative coterm angle. How do you do a reference angle? Oh, you just have to draw and see how far it is from the x-axis. That's all. Okay. It just depends. Every situation is unique. So you just got to just draw and see how close it is. There's no standard. Just Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll see more salt geometry. Maybe I've done this one in the past a lot. Try five there. Be right back. <sighs>
How's it going? Um, I'm just doing, I'm doing pretty good, I'm just doing. Okay, volume I got for the cone, I got 96 root 77, and mm -hmm. monoid period pyramid, I got 96 root 113. Got it. Good work. Um, I think maybe four might be a good one. Um, this is not a topic you really want to do. We got a few more minutes. Let me look. Um, do you have any problems on
Oh, um, it's um like using you have to use your calculator for this, but um. on like using of using um negative um like sign to find angles on like the unit circle like c can't cosine negative okay so like for example um Like trig ratios using the calculator. Right, 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 right. They're using the calculator? Yeah. Like what kind of problem? Like how we do do we find like um secant three equals what? Oh, then you just do one over um cosine. Oh sorry, uh and <laughs> secant how, three. How we like find it for any radian measure. Wait, so so what what was the question again? Um using trig ratios on the um calculator to find any radian measure. Oh, you mean inverse? Mm. Are you talking about inverse? Yeah, inverse. Oh, inverse. Oh, I I, I get you now. Okay, so you see, say something like this here, right? Okay. So think about it. Well, this means that x equals the c can of three. Wait, no, let me take it back. Um, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm tripping. Uh, sorry, if you have the inverse secant of three, that means that secant x equals three, or cosine x is one third. So secant negative one equal cosine. So, so, say again? Does secant negative one equal cosine? No, 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 it does not. No, that's the inverse. Secant is just one over cosine. Does secant inverse of secant equal? Nope, nope, nope. What you do is you rewrite back as a trig function and then you flip it over and then you do the inverse cosine one third in the calculator. That's what you do. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so that's, that should be pretty simple. Um, let's try to think what else we can do. That's too easy. Um, Yeah, these just seem too easy. Um, let's 
So you've got a few more minutes here. Um, Huh. Can I find one's chords or tangent lines? Oh, uh, yeah, we did those. Yeah, I just want you to do a little more. Um, let's hear. Sorry, I think that's pretty obvious how 10 works. Um, I'm going to try 13, we'll wrap it up. Actually, okay. that, that seems too easy. Hold on. Let's all these here and we're done. Here we go. Um, EA is um, 114. And, um, yeah, because we had all that up, right? 144. 182, 266. Yeah, I'm sorry, what do you get again? 144. I got 90 for AE. For EA. Yeah, because AB is 84, BC is 38, CD is 64, and ED is 60. Maybe I put it in my calculator. Oh, I could, I could be wrong too. 124. Not sure. And one twenty two, two forty six. Um, yeah, it should be one fourteen. 
Yeah, that's what I got. All right, my bad. I, I, I was doing it wrong in my head. Um, and the A, B, I know you can do. Let's move, let's move on to angle one. Um, is that is 190 or no? Um, actually, we'll angle one a little bit. Let's do angle. I think angle two and angle three you probably can handle. Okay. Um, angle two is um. Um, forty nine degrees. Oh, wait. Yeah. Is BD forty nine degree B is angle two forty nine degrees? Angle two, 30 and 60, you average it, 98. Um, I'm sorry, say it again, 49? Yeah. Yeah, you got it. The um, angle three is easy. That's going to be 131. Yeah. And then angle four. Um, the average of, um, or sorry, subtract 114 with 38 which is 96 divided by two, which is 48. 140, one, 114 minus 38 divided by two. Of 38. Right. Um, Okay, I think I did all of them. Cool. I think we're all set. Okay. Thank all right, cool. Well, good luck tomorrow. I'll see you at the, the Prax gym and um, yeah, have a great summer. And we'll, we'll yeah, talk to you. Yeah, I'm taking in the Lucas Library because of my accommodation. Oh, right. Then I'll see you in there. Okay. Yeah. Good, cool. See ya. Yeah. Bye.